Hello everyone, this is Rohan Meshram and welcome to my lecture on uh, sequence analysis and uh, in our previous few lectures we were discussing on implementation of dynamic programming algorithm for uh, pairwise sequence comparison. So to be exact in our previous lecture we learn how to generate the transformation matrix that is involved in typical dynamic programming algorithm. Okay, so uh, let us uh, just uh, visit back and let us see uh, what uh, we have set our goals for, right? So, uh, well, uh, we have learned that it is a three-step process of which uh, I have shown you how do you create a comparison matrix and uh, uh, how do we uh, generate this transformation matrix. So, you people are also now aware that for generating the uh, comparison matrix, some rules are supposed to be followed for scoring. We are going to use the values that are present in PAM250 scoring matrix. So, uh, we know that uh, what rule we need to follow, that we need to use some values from scoring matrix to create your comparison matrix okay and uh, i have also shown you what are the rules for transforming your uh, uh, comparison matrix or what are the rules for creating your transformation matrix okay and uh, now you people also know what is the path that is needed to be followed while uh, transformation that is we first follow uh, the path like we first uh, transform the uh, first column, then we transform the first row, then we move diagonally, then transform the second column, then transform the uh, second row and subsequently we reach to the end terminus of our protein sequence. Okay, so in this lecture we would focus on uh, the remaining uh, two aspects like uh, how do we provide gap penalties and uh, how do we calculate the final scores. So that is what is going to be the main uh, focus of interest of today's lecture. Okay, and uh, <coughs> uh, that is what uh, we are going to uh, talk in more details, right. Uh, so here is what we are going to do. All right. So uh, let us start uh, with uh, just thinking on as to why do we need to create this transformation matrix. First, uh, well, let us try to discuss key, uh, what was the need for creating this transformation matrix. Okay, so we had a logic for creating the comparison matrix. The purpose of creating the comparison matrix being uh, we need to consider all the possible combination of residue pair alignments and score them. Right, so that is why we created that comparison matrix. Then what might be the logic of creating this transformation matrix that uh, we have generated in our previous lecture? Well, the answer lies in the fact that this transformation matrix gives us an idea about as to what will be the maximum possible score if these two sequences are aligned. Okay, so remember that one of the major objective or one of the major expectation of dynamic, dynamic programming algorithm is to figure out an optimal alignment. That is why we have implemented the scoring schemes, okay, and uh, we decided that the alignment with the highest score will be the optimal alignment in our case, okay. So, since we need to find an optimal alignment, we basically need to know how much the best alignment can possibly score, right, and therefore, at the end of the transformation process, we know that if these two sequences are aligned, if these two sequences are aligned, then the alignment can have the best score of 41, not more than that. So that is why my friends, we generate the transformation matrix, okay. And the rules that uh, we were following to populate this uh, transformation matrix constitute the steps involved in Needleman and Wood's algorithm. Okay, so the rules that we were following to populate this transformation matrix constitute the Needleman and Wood's algorithm. So, in short, we were following 
Needleman and Wunsch algorithm to create the transformation matrix. Okay, so uh, now that we know uh, what might be the best possible score that the alignment can possess, well, uh, let us uh, try to find out what this alignment might look like. Now, to find out the answer to this, we need to perform another step in our uh, dynamic programming, what we call it as the traceback of the so created transformation matrix. Right. So let us uh, uh, let me tell you how things will happen in this uh, traceback uh, method as such. Okay. So uh, the traceback of the transformation of the transformation matrix is done to find out the best sequence alignment or what we call it as the optimal alignment. So why do we do this traceback? We do this traceback in order to uh, locate what might be the optimal alignment or what can be the best sequence alignment for the given uh, two sequences as such. Okay, so uh, the objective and uh, practically, you know, the best sequence alignment is found out by connecting the numbers in the transformation matrix. Okay, so how do we find out uh, the best alignment by connecting these numbers and how do we do that? I will just let you know just in a few while. Okay, so <coughs> the objective of, uh, you know, uh, since uh, now the objective of uh, tra uh, tracing back the transformation matrix is to find out an optimal alignment. Okay. So, uh, now the optimal alignment is, uh, uh, is obtained by uh, providing some gaps at some specific position. Okay. The objective of giving gaps is to optimize the alignment. Okay. So, now uh, these gaps represent either insertion or deletion mutation among the sequences. Okay. So, if gaps are placed in the alignment, then gap penalties are to be subtracted from the total score. That means if we place the gaps in our uh, traceback method or if we place the gaps in traceback procedure, then we shall have to deduct the gap penalty from the final score of this 41 in our case. Okay. So, we first need to calculate the value for gap penalties and then subtract it from the final score. Okay. So, now these gap penalties are calculated using the uh, using the equation. Okay. So, uh, before we go on to that equation, how do we proceed in this uh, transformation process is needed to be understood. Okay. So, uh, when we perform the traceback of your transformation matrix, what we do is that we begin with the maximum value at or near the end terminus of the uh, end terminus of your transformation matrix. Okay. And then we go on finding out what is the next largest value and we move down and to right. That means we move down and to right. That means we move diagonally in our uh, traceback method. Okay. So, this is what we are going to do. We are going to start out with the largest value on the end terminus and then try to find out which is the largest uh, possible number which is present uh, diagonally down towards your end terminus, down and right. Okay, so by connecting these numbers, you will be able to trace back, uh, you would be able to perform your uh, trace back procedure. Okay, <coughs> so uh, here is how you can do now. Okay, so as I have mentioned that you have to begin with the highest number on your end terminus. So, this particular box in your transformation matrix would correspond to the highest number. Okay. So, we begin with this 41 and now if we move down and to the right, what is the highest number that you have? Is it 32? Uh, 
if we move diagonally down what is the highest number of course it is 37 therefore we connect this 41 to 37 then again we would move down which is the highest number uh, that is present uh, on this side of the transformation matrix to 37 yes of course logically it is 35 okay but uh, we cannot move this way there uh, there is reason for doing that okay so when we consider this number 41 that means we are considering the alignment of the v from sequence 1 with the alignment of v in sequence 2 okay and then we when when we move on to this 37 then we are considering the subsequent alignment of e with the e in the second sequence but now if you want or if you wish to move in this direction rather than moving down diagonally that would mean you are aligning this e with this d as well since when you considered this 37 you have already aligned your e with this e in your first sequence so what you are doing by moving in uh, such you know horizontal way is that you are trying to align this e with e and simultaneously this e with d and that would make no sense and that is why we move diagonally down okay so we cannot move either in horizontal way or either in vertical way why because that would correspond to aligning the residue with multiple residue in another sequence and that would create some erroneous uh, alignment scheme and therefore we need to move diagonally down okay so now this 35 cannot be considered so what is the next biggest number if we move diagonally of course it is 32 and therefore we connect this 37 to 33 okay so now what is the biggest number that we can connect to this 33 of course now we cannot go this way as i have already explained okay we can end up with this 31 if we quit this column okay therefore we would quit this column and we would uh, end up with this score of 31 then what is the biggest value if we move diagonally of course it is 26 next biggest value is of course 20 okay so now again what is the biggest value if we try to move down diagonally it appears to be 17 but still we have next biggest value over here that is 19 but this value can be reached if we skip these two rows these two rows that correspond to alignment of r and p okay and this seems to be logical from 20 now we would reach to 19 by skipping these two rows okay so what is the next biggest value of course it is 14 as we have reached over here and next biggest value would be 2 right and that is how we have traced back traced our uh, that is how you perform your traceback alignment okay so there are now two possible ways in which this is one possible way okay that i have shown this way okay that i that uh, that can be shown in blue scheme okay another way round is that you would begin with uh, this one connect this 41 to 37 to 33 that uh, would mean alignment of ved with ven again give the gap at this 27 and start out aligning this uh, k l with k l okay but now this is where we are going to be different now instead of giving the gap between these two position as we have done in previous case right now we will give gap at these two position that is we would skip the 
alignment of these two rows that correspond uh, to the sequence T and R. And thus, we would, from 26, we would uh, reach to 20, which is present over here. And then we can join next number that is 19 and follow the same path that we have followed in our uh, previous attempt of finding out the traceback uh, procedure. Okay, so this is how it can work. Right, so this is how you perform. Uh, this is how you perform traceback. You cannot move either horizontally or you cannot either move vertically. Why? Because you know that would be the same as aligning a single residue from one sequence with multiple residue from another sequence. So if you want to skip, then you can skip an entire row or you can skip an entire column. Sorry, you can skip an entire column or you can skip an entire row in order to reach your next maximum value. Okay, so these are the simple rules for calculating your uh, or you can say for tracing back your method or tracing back your transformation matrix okay so uh, here is how you would end up if you go by the first scheme this 41 would correspond alignment of v and v okay that would give you the score of 41 then alignment of e and e this would give you the score of 37 alignment of d and n that would give you the score of 33 then we skip this column that means we gave a gap in front of q we ended up over here at 31 so alignment of what is this 31 value this 31 value correspond to the alignment of k with k the value over here is 31 then we have aligned l with l with the value of 26 then we align next s with t okay the value is 20 then we placed gap in front of this r and p okay we have placed gap in front of r and t this uh, this correspond to skipping the rows while this correspond to skipping the columns okay after skipping these two rows we end up on a 19 that correspond to alignment of k with k this has the score of 19 then we ended up at 14 that correspond to alignment of c with c with the score of 14 right and then finally we reach the c terminus that correspond to alignment of n with d with the score of and this is how my friends you have performed the traceback similarly we we can trace back with the another uh, method or with the another uh, path that i have already mentioned okay so now since we have skipped this column over here as well as over here and we have skipped these rows in uh, we'll say for example alignment 1 as well as in alignment 2 so what we are considering is that there are now two possible ways in which these two sequences can be aligned this is the first possible way and this is the second possible way so by uh, you know by uh, tracing back you can decide uh, how the sequences are to be aligned okay or what are the different possible ways these sequences can be align so in this way you generate multiple ways by which these two sequences can be aligned okay so now in order to align these two sequences properly we have skipped the column and we have skipped the rows that means we have provided gaps at appropriate position okay so now <coughs> uh, since we have provided the gap that means we would have to subtract the gap penalty from the final score of 41 okay since we have placed the gap that means we would have to subtract the gap penalty well now let us talk about how these gap penalties are calculated okay so now these gap penalties are calculated okay 
so this gap penalties are calculated using the equation a plus b k okay where this a correspond to the uh, penalty for opening the gap we would call this penalty as gap opening penalty while b is called as the penalty for extending the gap and therefore we would call it as gap extension penalty okay while this k would uh, represent the length by uh, the length of the gap okay so in short these gap penalties are calculated using this equation a plus b k where a is the penalty for opening the gap we call it as gap opening penalty k this k is the length of the gap in residues okay and b is the penalty for extending the gap by one residue we call it as gap extension penalty okay so now depending on how we set up the gap opening penalty and gap extension penalty we can establish two schemes for calculating the gap penalties okay now the two schemes are called as affine gap penalties and constant gap penalties okay well now let us talk a little bit about, uh, about this affine gap penalties and opening gap penalties how do they differ from each other okay well first let us talk about this affine gap penalty now in this affine gap penalties the gap opening penalty is kept high and gap extension penalty is kept low okay for example now some experimental studies have been carried out and as per those experimental studies they have suggested that the best value for gap opening penalty is minus 8 and the best value for gap extension penalty is to be minus 2 if you are using PAM 250 scoring matrix okay now what might be the reason to keep uh, this higher gap opening penalty and lower gap extension penalty so why is that we keep the higher gap penalty as compared to uh, gap extension penalty okay so basically there are uh, two reasons uh, to answer this question number one this reason can be traced to the fact that in natural evolutionary process the event of insertion and deletions are very rare as compared to the substitution mutations that is the frequency of substitution mutation is higher than that of insertions and deletions so this fact must also be reflected in your algorithm to account this concept we made the intro what if we make the introduction of gaps to be more computationally difficult in this way we can reflect the rarity of insertion and deletion mutation event and therefore the gap opening penalties are kept higher therefore by keeping the gap opening penalty high the algorithm will minimize placing the gaps frequently during the alignment process now placing more gaps will eventually mean deducting more score value from the final score if more gaps are placed higher will be the penalty and lower will be the score and the overall objective of the algorithm is to find out alignment with the high score therefore by keeping higher gap opening penalty the rarity of insertion and deletion mutation event is maintained in the computer program okay so uh, now the reason number two being that uh, being it's easier to extend the gap once it is initiated well there is biological reasoning behind uh, this observation as well okay now although uh, we are discussing the alignment of proteins and mutations like substitution and insertion and deletions in protein here but at the basic level it has to be the dna that needs to get mutated right then and then these changes will reflect in the protein for example the deletion mutations are represented as gaps in the sequence alignment when such insertion or deletion mutations occurs naturally 
the initiation of mutation is difficult to happen as compared to extension. This again is based on the logic that if such insertion or deletion mutation even occur, then it is uh, more possible that several adjacent residues from your DNA are likely to be get inserted or deleted. I mean, what are the chances that deletion event happened and only one nucleotide is deleted? The odds of happening such an event are very thin. Now, this fact can also be reflected if we set the differential gap opening and gap extension penalty. Or in other simpler words, by setting different values of gap opening and gap extension penalties, uh, this rarity of uh, this insertion and deletion uh, mutations can be implemented in your uh, dynamic programming algorithm. Okay. So, the next type of, uh, uh, you know, penalty or uh, you can say uh, penalizing scheme is in form of this constant gap penalties. Okay. So, in this uh, constant gap penalties, the values of this gap opening penalty and values for this gap extension penalties are kept same. Okay. So, uh, this scheme appears to be less realistic as compared to the affine gap penalty. Hence, this affine gap penalty scheme is generally implemented in real life alignment problems. Okay. So, one more thing that you should remember is that if the gaps are placed at the terminal region of the alignment, then such uh, gaps are not penalized. Okay, we'll say for example, if you end up aligning the two sequences in this way and you have placed gap in this region or you have placed gap in, gap in this region, then such gaps are uh, not uh, to be penalized. Okay, so uh, this observation can also be attributed to the fact that whatever two homologous sequences that you are trying to align, they can be of different length. Okay, therefore, gaps at either uh, of the gaps that are present either at the start or at the end of the alignment are avoided from a penalty to get more realistic alignments. Okay, moreover, we are trying to align the two sequences globally and therefore, our attempt will be to include both the ends of the two sequences. Right. And because that is what we do in global alignment at the very first place. Okay. So, in our case, we would avoid giving gaps at the uh, initial position or at the terminal position. Why? Because our objective is to align the two sequences end to end. Right. So, the long story told short, we need, we will be using gap opening penalty as minus 8 and gap extension penalty as minus 2. Now, let us think of how do we implement uh, this concept in our given example. Okay, so here is uh, what we have done. When we trace back our algorithm or when we trace back our transformation matrix, uh, by either of the two ways, uh, we have to skip this position. Okay, and uh, we have skip, skipped two rows in either of the two possible alignments that uh, we have considered. Okay. So, this is how you calculate the gap score. Okay. So, as I have already mentioned that we need to use this equation A plus BK for calculating the uh, penalty score. Okay. So, since we have provided two gaps, this much portion of your expression corresponds to the uh, to uh, calculation of gap penalty when you uh, place the gap at this location while this much portion of your expression correspond to the gap penalty that you need to uh, calculate when you place these two gaps in the row as such okay so let us fill on the values that we have decided now what is the uh, we have used PAM250 scoring matrix, right? 
for calculating this transformation matrix. Therefore, we would be using minus 8 as gap opening penalty and minus 2 as gap extension penalty and k is your gap length. Okay, A is your gap extension penalty, B is your gap sorry A is your gap opening penalty, B is your gap extension penalty and k is your the length of the gap. Well now let us put this value in our equation. So this expression correspond to penalizing or calculating the gap uh, penalizing the score that we need to calculate when we place this gap. Okay. So now we have initiated the gap therefore we have to subtract 8 what is the value of b that is supposed to be 2 and what is the length of this gap the length of this gap is we have placed the gap length of 1 residue right okay why do we have plus over here because we have placed it in the bracket and hence the uh, we have kind of uh, uh, we took this minus sign out of the bracket therefore we have plus over here Okay, so this is the gap penalty that is needed to be subtracted for providing gap at this particular position. At now considering these gaps, the length of gap is 1 and 2. Therefore, the value of k would be 2 here. The gap opening penalty of course would be 8 and gap extension penalty would be 2. Okay, now the similar thing is to be done for your next uh, possible uh, alignment scenario in your traceback that you have obtained. Okay, So, by either of the way for alignment 1 or another possible alignment 2, if you solve it, you would end up with reducing the gap penalties to the score of 19. Okay. So, now since this alignment 1 would also reduce to 19 and alignment 2 would also reduce to 19, we then say that these two alignments are equally probable. Why? Because they end up having the same score. Okay. So, if it happens that after, uh, you know, if, if it had happened that the score of one alignment is higher than the other, then we would have said ki, okay, this one is the optimal alignment, which whichever has got the higher score. Okay, So, in this way, either you can align the two sequence this way, provided in scheme A, or you can align the given two sequence in as per provided in scheme B. Why? Because they end up with the same score after subtracting the gap penalty. Okay, so uh, this is how you implement the gap, uh, you know the concept of providing uh, gaps at appropriate position. Now you know where as to where do we place the gap. Now you know as to where, uh, what might be uh, an optimal position to place the gap or how uh, what should be the length of the gap. Okay, this uh, uh, the traceback procedure gives you the exact idea of these things. Okay, so in this way, you align the two sequence using a global alignment algorithm called as dynamic programming algorithm called as Needleman and Wunsch. Okay, so uh, this was the simplest way that can, uh, well, this is the simplest way that I have devised to explain you guys. So, if you talk in uh, the mathematical way or if you go and uh, uh, check out any book, well, say for example, uh, if you check out uh, the book written by David Mount, this is how you would end up uh, as a formal description of your Needleman and Gunge algorithm. Okay. So, uh, this is the value of the current box that we have set up in our transformation matrix. Okay, This expression correspond to the value of previous diagonal box in the transformation matrix, the value of Q. This box correspond or this expression correspond uh, to the value of current box in the comparison matrix, that is the value of P. Okay, 
this is the value of this expression correspond to the value of r and this expression correspond to the value of s okay so uh, this is you know the formal description of the nidelman and bunge algorithm okay and if you end up reading that book you might see that this is how they expressed okay so this is the path that is needed to be followed then you need to check out what is the uh, previous diagonal box value what is the maximum value in uh, the row and in the column so on and so forth okay so my objective was to make it as simple as possible if you go by book then you would have to understand all these terminologies and mathematical ways to represent your needle man and bunge algorithm right okay so uh, enough discussion on this global alignment using nidelman and bunge algorithm well now let me introduce you with the concept of local alignment right so uh, <coughs> i am not going to uh, tell you in detail or uh, you know uh, tell you how this uh, needle uh, this smith and waterman algorithm work i would just brief you how it differs from your uh, uh, needle man and bunge algorithm okay so this smith and waterman algorithm is uh, a modification of the dynamic programming algorithm for sequence alignment and provides a local sequence alignment giving the highest score to the local match between the two sequences okay so now needle man and bunge algorithm is to be performed for finding out global alignment while smith and waterman algorithm is to find out if you want to figure out if the two sequences share some local stretch of similarity only this much region from sequence 1 is similar to this much region of sequence 2 if that is our objective then you would perform local alignment and to perform local alignment you would uh, require this smith and waterman algorithm so this smith and waterman algorithm is modification of your needleman and bunge algorithm okay so now why would one want to consider this local alignment okay the local alignments you know are usually more meaningful than global matches uh, because they include patterns that are conserved in the sequence okay so uh, uh, the thing is that the rules for calculating your transformation matrix in smith and waterman algorithm well these rules are uh, you know slightly different when it comes to uh, uh, when it comes to align the two sequences locally using smith and waterman algorithm okay so uh, let us talk about uh, what are the differences in these rules when it comes to your smith and waterman algorithm okay so now the first thing that is needed to be done is that the scoring system is needed to be modified okay the scoring system must include negative scores whenever it comes to uh, scoring the mismatches okay and when the dynamic programming transformation uh, matrix value uh, are to be calculated uh, and when you calculate the values for that transformation matrix the moment the values become negative that value is said to be zero right the first thing is that you need to have a negative score when you consider mismatches and wherever the negative score comes while transformation you would set that box to zero okay so in short the math the mathematical formulation of the dynamic programming algorithm is revised to include the choice of zero as the minimum value at any matrix position okay so now whenever the zero would appear in your transformation that would result or that would trigger the terminating of any uh, alignment to proceed further okay so whenever the zero would come we would terminate that alignment up to that point and we would stop there so that where, uh, wherever there is decrease in similarity let's we'll say for example uh, if the similarity increases from here to here and if the sim uh, and if the sequence are dissimilar from here 
when your algorithm reaches at this point the similarity would start to decrease and the since the similarity would start to decrease we would put zero in our transformation matrix and stop or terminate the alignment at this position we will not include subsequent uh, boxes in our transformation process so that is how your uh, that is how your transformation matrix would work in this case okay so this is what it is done we have included the option of zero okay so uh, this is the uh, uh, i mean we would have to calculate the value of previous diagonal box we would have to consider the value from the comparison matrix the maximum value in the row the maximum value in the column also we would have to consider the zero if the similarity drops there is a negative value compare it with zero as well right if it is a negative value okay that means it is less than zero of course you would have to place zero in your transformation matrix and hence the alignment would terminate at that box itself and therefore we implement the concept of uh, you know uh, uh, the concept of limiting our alignment uh, to only local stretches rather than extending it to the uh, extending it uh, to reach to one of the end either the end terminus or c terminus okay so uh, here is the basic difference between this is your needleman and wunsch algorithm this is smith and waterman algorithm all the steps are you know eventually same these two algorithm differs only with the addition of zero in your smith and waterman algorithm okay uh this is how smith and waterman algorithm differs from your needleman and wunsch algorithm okay and uh, that is all folks and uh, uh, we would stop our discussion on pairwise sequence comparison here so in our next lecture in our next topic we would begin with some something new okay i hope you enjoyed uh, these three lectures okay and hope you would implement this in your own studies